I need to kind of start with a, an apology because I thought I'd gleefully accepted an invitation to speak about In Christ Through Breakfast, <laughs> which is why my, my response was so enthusiastic, but I'm going to have to make do with lunch. So, but um, no, today I want to talk about forgiveness and trust. You know, forgiveness is one of the chief hallmarks of Jesus' followers, isn't it? And yet it's surprising how little it seems to be mentioned, spoken of these days, even in the church, the churches that I frequent, which seems a little bit ironic. I'm sure yours is an exception to that. And how bizarre as well when it comes to political matters um, that followers of Jesus seem to park Christian ethics and theology at times. Um, as if politics is fair game for a different set of Christian rules. And yet, in a moment of political execution, Jesus somehow utters, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There are some of us who, in this room, are going to have to learn to forgive the 51% of the UK who voted to leave. There are some of us who will have to forgive the leave campaign for not having a plan in place in case of a Brexit vote. There are some of us who have despised Theresa May's decisions and negotiations and we will have to forgive her. There are those of us who have to forgive the Conservative Party for calling a snap general election two years ago, which has meant Parliament can barely pass anything in the Commons. There are those of us who have to forgive both referendum campaigns for their fear-mongering efforts and cheap tactics in the run-up to the vote. There are those of us that have to forgive the UK government for not having negotiated thus far a better deal or any deal at all. There are those of us that have to forgive the Scottish government for giving so much airtime to Brexit and not dealing with seemingly other matters of business for Scotland. There are those of us that have to forgive the behaviour of certain portions of the media who've been unhelpful in the depictions of anticipated outcomes where fear has been the dominant watchword. There are those of us that have to forgive certain MPs for voting to remain. There are those of us that have to forgive certain MPs for voting to leave. Those of us that have to forgive family members who to our shock and awe and frustration voted differently than us. Unbelievable. Those of us that have to forgive personal friends, people we respect, who voted the other way from us. Those of us that have to forgive the gloating and smugness that some people have given off by getting the outcome that they wanted. There are those of us that have to forgive that person who seems to be a know-all know on Facebook and there is never any let up with their posts on the one position. Dare I say it, those of us that have to forgive our church leader who may have used their platform or their position to promote one view over t'other, isolating some or many. There are those of us that have to forgive somebody that has behaved badly, lost their temper over Brexit with you. Well, those of us who have to ask for forgiveness for behaving badly with people we know well and some people we don't know so well. Those of us that have to ask for forgiveness 
for trying to present ourselves as know-it-alls when internally actually we're freaking out. And those of us that have to for ask for forgiveness for having a know-it-all attitude, and maybe you do know it all, but you need to take a more humble posture. Those of us that need to ask for forgiveness today for letting Brexit brew up fear in our hearts instead of trusting the Father of all lights. From the Father hearts, anybody involved in the brokering or the debate, prominent figures, and we curse them deep within ourselves. We despise, we hate even that person. Those of us that have to ask for forgiveness for making Brexit the dominant thoughts of our heart rather than seeking after the kingdom of God in all its fullness, coming from heaven to earth somehow. And those of us that have to ask for forgiveness for contributing to gossip or cursing on the issue of Brexit. Some of us need to perhaps use that private space today to ask for forgiveness for the root of bitterness developing in our hearts for arrogance taking a stronghold within ourselves, for harboring hostility towards those that voted differently and think differently and are motivated slightly differently in political terms than us. And that leads us on to trust, I think, and it? Something um, that I've been noticing, and it's not dissimilar, is it, to the indie ref? But the big difference between the indie ref and Brexit is that things are going to change with this one, whereas previously that did not. That is the huge difference. Friendships that have cooled off because of Brexit. Friendships in Christ that have cooled off. How awful is that? That need to be warmed back up again. Trust. Attempted, at least. And we've all, because of the nature of the book, become polarised in, in some way. And yet the, the, the zeitgeist, the mood is that if you voted differently from me, then somehow you are untrustworthy on every everything else in the whole wide world all of a sudden. And that's how the rationale goes, at least. So then there's an ongoing suspicion about you're an untrustworthy broker now. You're an untrustworthy church leader, Christian. You can't fairly represent anyone else, we say to our MP perhaps, or other people's MPs. You've got to be one thing or the other. And Brexit has kind of revealed a lot of that to me at this time. Why in society can we not disagree on one thing, which by the way doesn't make me a bad person, nor does it mean that we can't fruitfully agree wholeheartedly on lots of other things, and still somehow trust one another or be in relationship. Early doors in my role at CARE I went to visit an MSP, uh, Jenny Mara MSP from Dundee, and she had written a bill on human trafficking, a proposed opposition members bill. And we at CARE really wanted to see this thing hit the light of day, but there was very little chance in this thing happening because the SNP were dominant in Parliament, they weren't wanting to be seen to take on an opposition member parties, bill, etc, etc, etc. So I showed up at her office uh, at Parliament and said, what can we do to help you? This bill needs to see the light of day. And she said, Stuart, she was very kind to me. She made me a cappuccino, she sat me down very friendly 
And she said, Stuart, can I just, I know who you are. I've never met you, but I know who Care for Scotland is. I voted this way on such and such a bill, which I know means a lot to you as an issue in your organisation. Can we do business here? I said to her, we can on this issue, regardless of what you did that day back then. We can on this issue. And she was willing, she was willing to do that up front, but she wanted to check with me that I was willing to go for it as well. Not even a Jesus follower. And so we need to work this thing, thing through as a society, yes, which is a tougher thing, but as a church, as churches, if we cannot work our way through distrust and unforgiveness as churches, as a people who are marked out with the Ministry of Reconciliation, we have a massive, massive problem. It's so important that we do not impugn bad motives on others who voted differently than us. It is incumbent upon us as Christians to be able to be honest about breakfast, Brexit, about, I was going to say breakfast there, about nationhood, <laughs> borders, immigration, common fisheries policy, whatever it is, was your sticking point to vote one way or t'other. But by choosing not to sit down and converse, it is such an easy opt out and send some incendiary message on Facebook, hoping that person clocks it and gets a wee bit irate. It's not good enough. If we cannot choose to work hard at these conversations to build up trust and learn to work fruitfully on some issues and part ways on other and yet embrace one another all at the same time, well, boy, we have a lot of growing up to do as a church. The minute we start othering one another, we are lost in Christ. We really are. And I will finish with this. The Scottish church is as small as ever now, isn't it? We know that. The Briarley stats, we can all get depressed together perhaps. But never in my mind have we been more fragmented as well. This is an opportunity to start building trust. Theological and political. Today, my question for you is this. Is there someone, something you need to forgive? And who can you personally, face to face, rebuild trust with to start building something alternative in Christ through Brexit? Thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff.